Okay, we're continuing our study on evil. Looking at what evil is, as you turn your Bibles to Zephaniah chapter 1 in the Old Testament. Zephaniah, just for Haggai. Amen. Zephaniah, Haggai. And we're looking at evil versus good. And we're living in a world where evil is good and good is evil. But we've already done that study. And we move to the, the biblical definition as we look at these verses now is what is the biblical definition of evil? What is the definition of good? And what's the difference? And what is, you turn to Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 1, what is the standard? Because my standard of evil and good is not going to be the same standard of a person who is involved in pornography. My good and evil does not, will not match with a person who is involved in any way, short, shape, or form of illegal drugs. There is definitely a difference between evil and good when you're in the realm of abortion. So we've got to look at the standard that God has set for us. And the standard is the King James Bible. You say, well, Brother Stanley, I don't have the King James Bible. And then my opinion of the Word of God, if it's not King James, it's evil. You got one God, one salvation, one baptism, one spirit, one savior, one, one sacrifice for sin, but you got 32,000 different Bibles. That's not, that's not God. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 12. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will, God will search Jerusalem with candles. The only place that word shows up, candles. And punish the men that are settled on their leaves at the bottom of a barrel. The bottom of the, the liquor, the grossest part, lead. All the sedimentation. And they shall say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. So we definitely have a standard here. And there's a standard by the complainers, by those against God. There is a good and there is an evil. And pretty much man is born with an evil, with a good intent. And you only have to be educated to call evil good and good evil. And what the statement here is people are saying, no matter what we do, good or evil, whatever the standard is, God will have no reaction and will not judge us accordingly. Now, that's in the churches 2020 throughout the world. There are sodomites who are going around marching saying God loves us too. When the Bible says, the Bible says it's an abomination. And when Hollywood's making a profit of fornication and whoredoms and adultery, we're making a profit. And the Bible says it's wrong. But we can go ahead and make our movies and we can make the profit because whoever, whatever God there is, he doesn't see us and he doesn't care. And I mean, after all, if, if God was against us doing our sin, and doing the evil that we do, he would send lightning bolts down and he would destroy us. And he could pretty get pretty much well get a majority class of people. If I went to church, the, the roof would fall in. And there's the aspect today, I can go around and do whatever I want. I, I can I can murder somebody, I can steal from somebody, I can vandalize. I, I can do the most wickedness of all wickedness ever to be done wickedly, and God doesn't care. And yet, 
whether we do good or evil, you know in your heart that there's an evil and a good. But you just don't care. And what you're saying is God will not recompense man for his deeds. Whether God will not reward us for doing good and God will not judge us for doing evil. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. That's wicked. Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. Matthew 5, 45. That ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son, that belongs to God, to rise on the evil, and on the good. And he sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. And that's Jesus speaking. And what is Jesus saying? Well, there are two kinds of people. There are those who do evil, which are more prone to behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. And there are good people who do good. There is no common ground. Your present actions are to God's either evil or good, not both. Now, the people that we read in Zephaniah, well, whatever we do, good or evil, God ain't going to judge us. God ain't going to reward us. And yet, Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, 45 is, listen, you know what? You're going to do evil. And you're going to do good. And God, well, if that man is so wicked and vile, yet God gives rain upon him and his crops. I'm so good and great, and God makes the rain on your crops. God is merciful and God is gracious when it comes to weather. And God will flood out a, a, a possession of a good man. And he'll flood out the possessions of a bad man. And there's just and unjust. Listen, I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I'm going to glory, and I don't do good all the time. And I am not just 100% of the time. There are times I do evil, and there are times I'm unjust. And what I'm doing according to the Bible... If I'm in sin, God says that's evil. But I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. I don't care. You're doing evil. And I wrote to you, if you confess your sins, I am faithful enough to, to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all righteousness. That's written to a Christian. Why? Because a Christian can do evil. And if you do good, you'll get gold, silver, precious stones at the judgment seat of Christ and you earn reward. There is evil or good, there's no other ground. And let me tell you about the churches. If you're going to use the means of the world to witness and evangelize to the world, it's either good or it's evil. You don't have a common ground. Will, well, you know, well, for the world, and we're gaining the world. And yet Jesus said, you know, no, not the world hated me first. Did not John write to the Christians, marvel not, my brethren, the world hates you? So if you're using something that hates Jesus Christ and hates Christians and you're doing it for the means of evangelism, it hates God because it's of the world. And God will find it evil. I don't care what you think you're doing. I don't care how much scripture you can prefer. If it's evil, it's evil. If it's good, it's it's good. And you know what's wrong with the pulpits of the world today? They're calling evil good and good and evil. And that's not what we're studying today. We are studying the classification of evil and good. And there's no other ground. You can't have your sin and enjoy your sin in God's presence. And call it Christ. Or Christian. 
and you're only being fooled by the devil. No other ground. Either doing evil, saved or lost, or you're doing good, lost or saved. There's no middle ground. God said, Jesus said about, about the lie of the same church, I'd rather you be cold, I wish you to be hot, but if you're lukewarm, you walk down the middle of the road, you, you make me sick and I'm going to bark you out. And you know what your worldly means of evangelizing? It makes God sick. Revelation chapter 3, our church age. And you know what the Bible says, but you're just having problems with, with a 50-year-old, 52-year-old man who, who ought not to know better than me. Okay? And we'll meet at the judgment seat of Christ and we'll see who's correct as you will see wood, hay, or stubble. Matthew 7, 17. Okay? Matthew 7, 17. So every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, and every corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So in Matthew 5.45, there was evil and good, just and unjust. We have now in Matthew 7, 7, 17, we have a good tree or we have a corrupt tree. And corrupt is to become putrid, putrefied, to rot. That's evil. And again, there's no middle ground for the eyes of God for man's work. You're going to walk up to that apple tree, and that apple tree is only going to give you an apple that's going to nourish your body. Or you're going to grab an apple off that tree that's going to make you sick and maybe cause death or other ailments. You cannot walk up to a fern and get poison ivy. And you cannot walk up to a, 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 a poison ivy bush and pick it and put it in a vase and not be surprised. That, oh, look, I'm getting a rash. If the work of man is for Jesus alone, without appealing to the flesh, it is good fruit. And any fruit that is with spite, envy, Look at me, gratitude, pride, or self is a fruit of evil. Even if it's done in the foundation of Christian work. I'm going to go out in a public evangelism and I'm going to tell people about Jesus because I care about their soul. What do you think that, what do you think that, is that good or is that evil? Okay, if you're unsure, let me give you another one. I'm going to go out public evangelism with the church because my pastor's making me do it. And if, and if I don't do what the pastor tells me to do, I won't get recognition on the pulpit. I won't get this, this office of authority. Or I, you know, which one's good? And which one's evil? And we see by the words of Jesus, his own words, the word of God. Evil means corrupt, corrupt, to waste, to spoil, to consume. The offering plate. I'm going to fold up the one dollar. because That's how I got. I'm going to put a plate so no one can't see what it is. What fruit is that? Okay, and I, I've been in churches. We're going to have the $20 march. We're going to march. Anybody going to give $20, mark around the church, and then drop them into the box. Now we're going to have the $50 march. All those are going to give $50, march around the church, and put it in the box. And the $100. I've been in those churches. Look at me. Look how much I'm giving. And yet that poor widow walked up to the treasury and dropped all her life savings. And Jesus said that was good. Everybody else cast in their abundance. And Jesus said, nope, no recognition.
whether you are, whatever you do for the Lord, whatever it is, you're going to go to church. And you pray in the morning and say, Lord God, I, I've sinned. I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. Lord God, may I be a blessing to somebody at church. Lord God, may, may you be able to use me. At, I don't know how you can use me today, but Lord, use me today for your honor and glory. And Lord God, I, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy that the car will start and you'll get me there safely and well with my family. To your honor and glory. Now, what would that be? You already get the other one. Oh, God is pleased I'm here. Don't you know that God approves of me being here? This is my pew. This is my church. I give the money for this thing. And I am a part of this thing. And I pastor has me do this thing. And then, that's the publican. Look how great I am. Which is good fruit and which is bad fruit? Which, which is good fruit, which is bad fruit? Well, kiddies, you know, if you say this prayer, we're giving out Tootsie Rolls today. And to the ones that got the most memory verses, you can wear the crown in the classroom. And everybody can see your cardboard crown that you earned the scripture verse. Or, listen, sir, let me tell you. You've sinned. Have you always treated your parents right? You, you never complained. You never gave your parents a hassle. You, you never regretted your parents at all. I mean, you, you completely honored your father. No, you haven't. It says right here, it says honor thy mother and father. So then you're guilty as a sinner. And the, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, you need the Lamb of God because the wages of sin is death. You're going to die. And yet the Bible says that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever which can be you, whosoever believeth on Jesus shall not perish. And yet what must I do to be saved? The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Which one's good fruit? Which one is corrupt fruit? And you can't have both. Listen, you pick up a strawberry. And it's got a good side and a bad side. It's bad. Well, I'll cut off the bad part and throw it. It's still one. You have now half a strawberry. You don't have a full strawberry. And the badness of that, that part of the strawberry may have affected the good part of the strawberry when you bite into it. So we have people who say, well, what do we do good? Or what do we do evil? God don't care. And we have God that says there are two kinds of people. Those that do evil and those that, do, those that are prone Save the loss, and you're going to do both. And you can't walk the middle ground. You can't. Churches are trying it today. You can't. It's too bad the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to find yourself in error. And in Matthew 7, 17, there's a tree. It's either got good fruit, or it's got evil fruit. You say, well, if I walk up to a, to a tree, you know, it's got delicious fruit on there's got one bad fruit on, on that tree yeah you can pick that tree you can pick that fruit that's bad and you could take the seeds and plant it in the ground and have another tree but you can't eat it it's not for the nutrition of your body i think it's jeremiah says that there were figs there were good juicy figs and then there were evil naughty figs yeah So, Matthew chapter 12, 34. See, we're going, in a, we're going in a time today, we're calling evil good, we're calling good evil, and we're doing it in the name of the Bible. God's up in heaven. Well, at the judgment seat of Christ, we'll settle it out. 
I would hate to lead someone to Christ falsely and have them think they're saved. And I've dealt with people like that. Because you use an evil way of getting them saved. And are you telling me God's going to do evil for a person to get saved through Jesus? You really believe that? Then I doubt your salvation. See, I'm so bold to speak. I don't care what your opinion is. And I don't care you got offended. I am telling you what the Bible says. If you don't like it, your controversy and your offense is in God and not me. I'm just a vessel. And we're looking at the Bible. We've got a King James Bible. And we're reading what the Bible says. That's your problem. Matthew 12, 34. Old generation of vipers, snakes. How can you be, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Man, he starts off, you, you serpents, you snake in the grass. That's the nice loving Jesus. The loving Jesus that floats above the ground. Woo. He walked up, you're a snake. You're vile. You're wicked. And out of your mouth proceeds evil. Who is Jesus talking to? He's talking to the Pharisees, the main religious sect of the sect of all sects to be what Paul was of. They were the strictest sect. They were the religious. They were the holy. They were the pastors of the flock. And Jesus walked right up to their face and said, You're evil. You're a snake in the grass. That's what Jesus is going to say to many pastors and pastorettes of the church age today. And many of them he's going to cast in the lake of fire and say, I never knew you. Lord, did I preach this message? Lord, did not I have thousands of people? Lord, weren't they all baptized by me? Lord, did not I heal and depart from me, workers of iniquity? I never knew you. Because you're evil. Give us names. I'm not giving you names. You know who they are. Not all religious people, persons, are righteous. And if you got a, a letter, red lettered Bible, the words of Jesus in red, what we just read in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, is in red. It is the mouth of Jesus. Jesus, 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 greatest name I know. We love you so much, we'll give you the cross. This to shut you up so. Crucify him, crucify him. Because we don't want to hear him no more. That's what the world thought of Jesus. And then you think everybody's going to go to heaven. You're a fool. Look at 2 Corinthians. We'll run over to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. If you think every man or woman in the pulpit is saved, you've been fooled. Women don't belong in the pulpit, according to the scriptures. There's one thing wrong right there. A woman's not to assert the authority of a man. She's usurping the authority of a man. She's going against the scriptures. She is wrong. I have been blocked. With, I think it was Twitter, whatever you call it. I have been blocked by Joyce Meyer's Twitter account because I challenged her. To the Bible says a woman. A woman shall not assert the authority of the, of the man. What do you have to say to that, Miss Myers? I cannot make any more posts. I think it's Twitter. One of them counts. 11.13. All right. For such are false apostles. Ooh, that's not good. Deceitful workers. You may have people that are in your church doing work and they're deceit. Yes, the holy baloney crew. We just love you so much. 
transforming themselves of the apostles of Christ. Anybody in 2020 says they have the apostolic healing, the apostolic office of the original 12 apostles are liars because you cannot be an apostle today. They're gone. They're dead. So are the, the, the signs. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. You should be careful that light at the end of the tunnel may be Satan. I let my light shine. It may be the devil's light and not God's light. The Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. It didn't say go in all the world and shine. You don't know your Bible. And you don't like me because I point out what the Bible says and the Bible goes against what you say, proclaiming to be a Bible believer. Yay! Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, whose ministers? 14. Satan. Satan has ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. They look right. They think they do right. You fall for them doing right. But they are actually Satan's men behind that pulpit, behind that podium, or whatever church or whatever assembly they are in, whatever they're behind, they may be of Satan. And nowhere, nowhere of God. There are good ministers in pulpits all over the world. And there are evil ministers in the pulpits all over the world. And Jesus went up to, to the Pharisee, the, the strictest religious, say, and said, Shall we dine together and have a meal? Uh, shall we have great economical process together? He says, You vipers, you speaking evil. People get upset. I see a Catholic priest walking around. You're supposed to call him father. When the Bible says, call no man your father. Sir, what's your last name? Sir jo Mr. Jones, your collar's on backwards. You ought not to do that. Jesus did it. Paul called him out. That's scriptural. You're mean and offensive. And you've got the 2020 spirit of the world. Plain and simple. There's an evil and there's a good. And there are good men in the pulpits. And there are evil men and women in the pulpit. And you've got to figure them out by the word of God. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35, the next verse. Again, red letter. you got a red letter Bible. We're reading the words of Jesus. And the words of Jesus is the word of God. A good man out of the good treasures of, of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. Jesus did not say that there was a good ghost or evil ghost. They said, what'd you do? I tried to put evil and good together, and I tried to put good and evil. You can't make up a word. And Jesus says, your action, your treasure, and your heart is either good or it's evil. And it can't be, Revelation 3, middle ground. If it's middle ground, you're making God sick. And what you're doing and what your church is doing may be good and pleasing God and gold and silver and precious stone. Or you and your church may be doing evil, wood, hay, or stubble. Good treasure. Lord God the Father, uh, this missionary... Man, he loves you. He's going out in the field and Lord, all I got is a five dollar bill. I'm gonna give this five dollars for him. 
The Lord recorded that in the treasures of heaven. Another guy. Well, this mission. Oh, look. I got a hundred dollar bill. Let me put my name on it so the church treasurer can put it on my account and I can put it on my IRS. And I can deduct what I've given to that missionary and what I give to the church. I can deduct that off my taxes and the government will give me money in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, Stolly, I take the fact is you don't believe in deductions of your offerings and tithings of the church to the government. Absolutely, correctly, positively so. I believe it's evil. Now, what you think, what you want to do, that's between you and the Lord. Let's take another circumstance. You, you find somebody, and you meet somebody, and, and you, you bring them to church, you, you show them the Bible, you grow them in the Bible, you show them how good Jesus, and you do everything you can to show them Jesus, the Bible, and a way of true life. Or you have somebody come along and they steal a child and they sell that child in the black market and that child is used for, for, for profanity and just abuse. And what, what is evil treasure and what is good treasure? And yet Jesus said, as far as the children, it'd be better to hang a millstone about your head to offend one of these little ones. And if, if you're going to turn a, a child away from God, that is evil treasure. You don't get good. And if you're going to manipulate people in the name of Christ, in the worldly ways of the worldly means of the worldly issue, I don't care what you add the name of Christ. I don't care what prayer you pray. I don't care what Bible you use. If you do it in the means of the world, that's an evil treasure. Because Jesus said, the world hates me. John says, marvel not the world hates you. And you're going to turn and use the world way that hates Jesus and hates you. And you think God's going to give you good treasure in heaven? You've been fooled. You've been deceived. And that's so in 2020. So what we have here. There's a good versus evil, and from an evil heart comes evil. You say, well, a cuss comes out of my mouth. Oh, where did that come from? That came from your evil heart. Why are these kids today, why are they causing riots in their in their bad mouth in their teachers and they have no respect for the police they have no respect for the parents and and no respect for others because that's the evil and wicked heart that you brought into them by the public school system by taking god and the bible and jesus out of the public school system and you told mom and dad don't spank them no more and you tell mom and dad just go ahead and have open sex and all that because it, it's a school taught in the subject of schools and that there's no responsibility. You got free liberty to do all you want. And you're just filling your evil heart. And now you're reaping and sowing. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. And if you're going to raise your children without the Bible, that is evil. And you cannot expect good. And we are in the same spot of the church today. Dr. Spock said, don't spank the kids, give them a kiss on the forehead and send them to bed. And, and the sociologists and the people with education said, don't spank your kid, call DCF. And look at the monstrosity that those things say when the Bible says, spare not the rod. A man that loves his child will, 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 will give him the rod between time. And you use the rod, you'll beat that, the hell out of that child. And the world says, no, we don't want the Bible. We don't want the good. Well, that's your evil you got going on today. And you got the churches. You're conforming away from the Bible and what the world says. And the church wants good. The church tomorrow, if the Lord tarries, is going to be as bad as what's going out in the world because the world is doing what the world does. 
Now the churches are doing what the world does. And in tomorrow's fruits, I can tell you one church right now. I've seen pictures of it. it looks like a biker's bar. Because they stepped away from the word of God and they had playtime. And they would skip Sunday evening service for playtime. And there's more holes in Swiss cheese than there's holiness in that church. And I was a retrobate to leave that church. I was the follower. I did not know what I was talking about. And your church split. And all the, the things I've heard that happened in that church. And how did the new church. Oh, do you like our old time antique pews? We have an air hockey table for the teens with nice fluffy uh, 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 chairs so they can just relax. Do you go out and tell people about Jesus? No, we biked into our playroom. How often you change your diapers? Don't be the... Oh, oh, Stanley. You're cruel. You don't have the love of God. I let my light shine. With dead batteries you do. Twelve thirty five, twelve thirty four, the words of Jesus. So why does a person commit such heinous crimes? It's in his heart. And the treasures laid up is the fact that people are being murdered today. Why are people being murdered today? Video games, books, movies, advertising. It's all evil. It's going into your evil eyes, going into your evil heart. And what comes out of it? Evil. There's only so much that you can go shoot, shoot, bang, bang in your video game. When that person's going to say, you know what? Let me go try it for real. There's so much for a pornography that that man looks at that nakedness and that man looks at that sexuality and say, you know what? That's not good enough. Let me go get the real thing. Am I wrong? Or am I right? And if you got an evil heart, you are saying, Stally, you are wrong. And I say that as evil is good and good is evil. I've already done that study. Go get the go get the tapes and video. We're talking about good and we're talking about evil. What is evil and what is good? And the churches are going about with the worldly ways, and that's evil. It's a watered-down gospel. That, show me where Peter, John, and James, and Jesus watered down the gospel. Show me where Peter, James, and John would dress up. Show me where Peter, James, and John, and Jesus would lie. We don't lie. You do a VBS skit. And you say, well, I'm Jesus. I'm Moses. I'm Abraham. I'm one of the wise men. I'm one of the shepherds. You're not a shepherd. You're not a wise man. You're not Jesus. You're not Abraham. You're not Moses. You are a liar. And when you do play acting and VBS, you are lying to the kids about who you are and what you are. And when you call Hollywood a sin for doing it, it's a sin. But when you do it for the VBS and you do it for your church, it's holy and right. Evil's good and good is evil. That's what you're doing. I hate Stolly for saying that. Okay. Okay. And we'll see it as wood, hay, or stubble is incorrect with what the Bible says. I have also been in churches where a Baptist story is not a lie. It's a Baptist story. But you can't say shacking up. you got to say adultery. But when it's, a, when it's a story told from the pulpit, it's a Baptist story. No, it's a lie. 
I call thing. If it's red, it's red. If it's blue, it's blue. If it's a dog, it's a dog. If it's a cat, it's a cat. Churches today are not calling things what they are. They're calling evil good. They're calling evil good and evil. And that's not what we're, we're on, good and evil. All right, we're going to get one extra one. I found this one. Luke chapter 6, verse 9. Usually we do 5. Today we're going to have a special. And it won't cost you nothing. Luke 6, 9. You say, Stella, you're so hard. No, I'm so right. You're so hard on not repenting and seeking God and reading your Bible and seeing that you're wrong. How dare. He's not a man of the cloth. He doesn't have no... Okay. Right. Luke 6, 9. Then said Jesus unto him. All right. Here comes red letter. I will, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful to do, is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil? To save life or destroy it? Again, our study here is, is there an evil or is there, is there a good? Red Letter Bible says that that was Jesus. And Jesus said there's a good and there's an evil. There's no middle ground. One last place. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Our church age. Laodicean church age. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 14. You cannot call your sin good and God be pleased. When you peel back a diaper, it's either clean or it's filthy. You can't have both. All right, half the diaper's got wee-wee in it. It's still dirty. Well, half the, half the diaper's got brown stuff in it. It's still dirty. But see, you want the diaper to have yellow and brown, then it's filthy. And that's what you want God to do when you're inviting the world into the churches today. I know I know two people now that are three people. I know three people that are Christian magicians. And anywhere in the Bible, there is no good. A, a, a magician is an abomination. And at one point, they turn a man away from serving God. But we're Christian magicians. And there are tons of them out there. And they think they're doing good by spreading the gospel. By using evil. What would happen if you were to make a cake. And you get everything you need. The cake mix, the eggs, the milk. And you mix that all up. And I'm going to put half a package of arsenic in it. You see, got milk. Mmm, got milk. Got eggs. Eggs are good for you. It's got the batter. The batter makes great cake. Even flavoring. But the arsenic. A little leaven lemons a whole lump. Man, you play that to the church stage today. And look at the lump that the church is in today worldwide revelation chapter 3 verse 14 unto the angel of the church of the lad the scenes this is our church age verse 15 i know thy work thou art neither cold nor hot would that not be an evil or good you either want a cold shower or you want a hot shower you say, well, I like warm. Okay. You've been working out in the garden all day. It's hot. And you've done, you know, your strawberries, your green beans, your cucumbers. Your, man, you worked hard. Do you want an ice cold water? Or do you want water that's been heated so you can 
would would put a tea bag in it. What would you want? You want the ice cold water. You're out in the snow. I come from Connecticut. You're out in the snow. You've been shoveling and you know, man, putting that snow away and sanding and and man, it's just cold. You come in the house. Would you want an ice cold Coca Cola or would you want ah? Oh, Give me some hot tea, or me would be, give me some hot chicken broth. Ooh, that hit the spot. Or a hot coffee. How about you, you, you go to your donut shop, right? You say, I want a hot uh, cream and sugar coffee. And they give it to you, you pay, you put your coffee thing. You're driving down the road, and you open that up, you take a sip of it, and it's ice cold. You want it hot. Keep reading. I know thy works that thou neither cold nor hot. I would that I were cold. God says, I, I want you cold. <laughs> Imagine God telling you, I want you cold. Or I want you hot. I want you on fire. I want you. Be a dead Christian or be a but, 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 but. So that, that because thou art lukewarm walking down the middle of the road, neither hot nor cold. I mean, neither cold nor hot. Excuse me. Lukewarm, in the middle ground. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Well, you see, Jesus, we're going to have a little world, and we're going to have a little holiness, and we're going to bring it to our church, and we're going to please you. God goes, Bleh. Why don't you just do nothing in your church? Just do nothing. Just sit in your church and die, which churches are today. There are churches dying because they're not evangelizing. They'll die. And they have died. And there are churches that are on fire serving the Lord and mission and evangelism. Man, they just love the world. They're going on, they're, they're going on fire. And there are my the churches, they're doing both. They're doing the world and they're doing Christianity. And they got it mixed together. And God says, that makes me sick. That's Bible. You got a problem? You got a problem with the Bible. I did not deviate anywhere from the Word of God. You think I did? Well, that's no deviation. It's what the Word of God says. Next week. 